Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I got a pretty cool video for you. Well, at least I think it's pretty cool. But RetroArch is coming to Steam, and I've got access to the RetroArch beta, so we're going to be taking a quick look at it in this video. Now this is officially from the Libretro team, and it's really cool how they have this set up. Now like I mentioned, I was lucky enough to receive a beta key, and they were kind enough to send over 10 extras. So what I'm going to do is leave a link in the description. You're just going to follow that link, put an email in, and it's going to randomly choose 10 people to receive a key. Once they're gone, they're gone. I really can't do anything about it. I only got 10. But keep in mind, once this is officially available to the public, it's going to be free on Steam. So yeah, it's actually really cool how they have this set up, and they had to do it a little different than they do with the official releases of RetroArch. But basically, in order to get cores for RetroArch inside of Steam, they're going to be known as DLCs. And they're going to be free. Nobody's going to be charging for any of this. Right now, in the beta, they have 10 available. We have Moopin64 Plus next for N64, Kronos for Saturn, PCSX Rearm for PS1, Stella for Atari, Same Boy for Game Boy, MGB for Game Boy Advance, we have Messin, Messin S, Genesis Plus GX, and Final Burn Neo. And this actually tripped me up a little bit, because if we go in here, let's go to Browse All, and let's say I want to get Moopin64 Plus next. Right now, at least in the beta, it's going to have a little download, this isn't working right now. What you need to do is go to your library where you have RetroArch installed, right click, properties, and you'll see DLC over here. Just make sure you have these checked as installed and it'll install them for you. And that's how it's working right now in the beta. I'm not exactly sure if that's how it's going to work when it's officially released, but this is how you get your cores up and running in RetroArch on Steam right now. Now I think one of the biggest features that RetroArch for Steam has to offer is online multiplayer. And yes, we were able to do this before. I've done videos on it. It's actually pretty easy to set up in the standalone version of RetroArch. But I think the Steam version is going to make it even easier. Because you can just right click on somebody from your friends list and start playing. Now unfortunately, I don't have anybody on my friends list right now that has RetroArch set up for Steam. So I can't demo it. But the RetroArch team has posted a video on their official YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link for that in the description. So we have online PvP, online co-op, cross-platform multiplayer with RetroArch on Steam. And I think this is going to make it easier for a lot of people to start using multiplayer with RetroArch. So even though I can't demo the multiplayer feature right now, I still wanted to get into a little bit of gameplay and just show you how it functions through Steam. So I'm going to head over to my library. I've got it installed. I got all the cores installed. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. It's going to start up just like RetroArch does. I've changed my theme color here, and you can do that from settings. If we go down to user interface, appearance, and there's a few to choose from. We can even go with hacking the kernel. We'll go to basic black because this is what it's going to look like right out of the box. So I've got all 10 of the DLC cores installed. If I go to load core, we can see them here. If you're not seeing this, then they're not installed correctly through Steam and you need to check each one of those boxes from the game's properties. Now I've already scanned some of my games. As you can see here, we got some arcade games, Final Burn Neo, got some Game Boy Advance, some Mega Drive, and some N64. But what I also have here is some PS1. So if I go to History, we can start this right up. So I'm going to go ahead and start a PS1 game using RetroArch for Steam. So I don't have my FPS counter listed, but I do want to display it real quick. So I'm going to head back into the menu by pressing my hotkeys. I'm going to back up, settings, scroll down until we see on-screen display, on-screen notifications, and at the very bottom here, notification visibility. Very top one, display frame rate. As you can see, I now have the FPS listed in the top right hand corner. I can back up, head back to my quick menu and resume playing the game. So I've just skipped into a little bit of gameplay here. Remember we're using the PC SX Rearm Core. It's going to perform just like it would with the standalone version of RetroArch, so as long as your PC can handle it, it'll do fine here. I'm going to open up my Steam overlay. I just press Shift and Tab. It'll bring up my friends list. And I can ask anyone in my friends list to remote play with me. Now, I'm not sure if anybody here is ready to play. But like I mentioned, the official RetroArch YouTube channel does have a little bit of a demo on it. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description. 
And once you're finished up, all you need to do is press escape a few times. It'll bring us right back out of RetroArch into Steam or to wherever you launch the Steam version of RetroArch from. So yeah, I'm personally really excited about this. This is going to get a lot more people into using RetroArch, and it's going to make life so much easier when you want to do online play with these retro games. You can just add somebody to your friends list and invite them from there. Now what we've been seeing here is the Steam beta. Not everybody can get to this, but I do have 10 extra keys to give away that the Libretro team was kind enough to give me. I have a link in the description. All you need to do is head over there. It's kind of a key giveaway site. Put in your email, and in 8 hours from the time this video is posted, it's automatically going to pick the 10 winners. Now I only have 10 keys, but they've been giving away keys over on their website, so I'll leave a link to that. But be patient, because this will be officially released. I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but they do need to get some testing out of the way, and that's what this whole thing's about. That's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments below if you think you'll be using RetroArch on Steam. I know I will, so definitely keep an eye out for me playing some retro games on here. And before I end this video, I do want to give a big shout out to the Libretro team. They do some hard and amazing work. And without them, we'd kind of be stuck. We wouldn't have these awesome retro operating systems like RetroPie or Botocera on our single board computers and even Android devices, because all of that uses RetroArch and Libretro cores in the background. I think a lot of people take for granted how much work the Libretro team really does for the emulation community, and I just want to say thank you. We really do appreciate it. But that's it for this one. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.